Well, hello there guys, Mr. G here, and I pro as I promised, we are going to be doing an experiment today. This time we're going to be doing the experiment to verify the law of conservation of momentum. Here is all the apparatus we need, but I'm not going to do the experiment. One of, of the learners, of my learners, which is my own son, is going to be doing the experiment. He's going to perform the experiment. He's going to take the result, and then we are going to tabulate the results and see what's coming there. But thank you for watching. I'll see you later when we finish with the experiment. Enjoy the video and as always subscribe. Thank you for watching. Mr. G here. See you next time. Well guys, here we are with the experiment, all right? So the experiment, the aim of this experiment is to verify experimentally the law of conservation of momentum. We're going to verify the law. We're going not to investigate the law, okay? So the apparatus we're going to be using is two spring trolleys with frictionless wheel. Now, the, the wheels will never be completely frictionless. So in this experiment, the learner is going to use oil, or he did use oil to make, to lubricate the wheels and then uh, reduce the friction as much as we can. We're going to use a, a ruler. This is the meter stick, it's a ruler. A smooth runway, a block of mass pieces, or mass, mass pieces, in this case, we use two of them. So what is the method to follow? First, we're going to measure the masses of each trolley and the masses of the block or mass pieces. Place the two trolleys on a frictionless surface and mark the starting position for both trolleys as initial position. So this one is the initial position of the trolley. Now that one was going or is going to be marked on the table. You unfortunately won't be see that one. You only see the learner marking. So that point when he's marking is going to be the initial position of each trolley. Okay? As you see here in this figure. Now, Release the spring, and when you release this, this line here that you can see in between the trolleys is a spring, the same as this one on this side. When you release the spring, the spring will open and will push both the trolleys away from each other. You will see the experiment. Now you repeat the explosion with the trolleys to take the rhythm. Now, one learner, obviously this is when you do it at school, you will have groups of more than one learner. Here in this case, it was only one, which make it a little bit more difficult and not as accurate as could be done if there were less, ex um, more, ex more learners doing the experiment, okay? So, one learner will release the knob, one learner will stop the trolley simultaneously, and you will see that one done now, and immediately the other learners will mark the final position. Now, if this one is done with three learners, as indicated here, the reading will be very accurate. Now, as it is done with only one learner, the reading won't be as accurate as if it's done with many learners. Now, each trolley must be stopped at the same time. So be careful with that one because it's very easy to uh, slip and then stop one trolley before than the other. You can select right as positive. This is important. We are working with a position which is a vector quantity and then if right is positive then left is a negative or either way if left is positive then right is negative okay for each trolley calculate the product of m1 x1 and m2 x2 but this one you will see it in the table the the uh, the, the result of the data is going to be recorded in this table then you have to draw a graph of um, uh, M1 X1 versus M2 X2 and then you have to answer the following question in order to do the analysis of the result. For example here you have to explain why we use um, MX instead of MV, the product of mass and position instead, instead of the product of mass and velocity. All right, And then to calculate the gradient of the graph and what is the meaning of the gradient. And finally, the conclusion of the experiment and what could be the possible bias or experimental errors. We're going to look at that one just now. So without more delay, I'm going to show you the learner doing the experiment. The, then we're going to show here the data and the analysis. Thank you. I'll see you just now. Hello there. Today we're going to do an experiment to verify the law of conservation of momentum with two spring trolleys. You can see under here the spring that have chambers that you change into one, two, and, an, and another three. So now we're gonna use these trolleys, two weight masses, each one of 0 0.6 kilograms, oil, and a marker to uh, find the displacement of the trolleys. The oil is because and the experiment is supposed to be done in a closed system. So we use the oil to reduce friction of the, 
of the trolleys. But we're gonna attempt to make it almost as it has no friction. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how uh, the experiment worked with the trolleys, but first, first I'm gonna move this. So if you see, there's, there's a spring trolley, obviously. So these have chambers that I push the spring further apart in each chamber. So now we're gonna try to put the trolley as close as possible that they together. And we're gonna take three readings, one without uh, a weight, another reading with one weight, and the third reading with another weight. Remember, each weight is 0 0.6 kilogram. So now I'm gonna show you the most radio. So I'm gonna move this to chamber number two. So now I'm gonna press the lever and then I'm, the trolleys are gonna move away from each other and I need to stop each of them at the same time. So now we are gonna measure each of the readings, but first I need to mark where they stop. So now the first reading is 33 centimeters. Now let's check out the new, the new one, the other one. The second reading is 33.1, so it's between the same range. Okay, so now we're gonna take the second reading with the first mass piece. So now we bring the trolley together and put it on the same chamber. In my case, it's the second one. So now bring the trolley together and use the first uh, block that has a mass of 0.6 kilogram. And remember, the trolley has a mass of 0.8 kilogram. So when you write, you need to write the masses together. So now we need to keep them together. I'm gonna hit it and I'm gonna try to stop it at the same time. Okay, so now I need to mark the reading that I, this one stops and then I'm gonna mark the other one. Now the reading, the displacement on this one is 40.3 centimeters and on this one is 23.3 centimeters. So now we're gonna go for a third reading, which is to add the other uh, block. So we bring them together to the same point, point zero if you like. So now we're gonna bring it here and we're gonna use the second block that has the same mass as this one. So now I'm gonna hit the chamber and then stop the block at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna put the reading where it stopped. So now the first for this one is 18 centimeters, and from this one is 46.6 centimeters. Okay, so now we finished the practical part, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna show you a table from which we will analyze the results and we will draw a conclusion. Well guys, then you see the experiment, we are going now to complete the table with all the data take it taken by the learner, okay? So the masses of, you can see here is the, the uh, trials, different experiments. You can see here everything for trolley one and trolley two. Trolley one, we're going to take that is the one that was on our left as we look forward and trolley two is the one that we look the, at the right, the one that he edited the masses. So for the first mess, for both trolley was 0, 0,8 kilograms and for the second trolley was 0,8 kilogram. Both trolleys were 0,8 kilogram. He did not add any mass, and the distance he calculated, which is in actual fact the position, it was in centimeter, but we have to convert it to meter. And remember, position is a vector quantity. So this one here is 33 centimeters, but when you convert it, it will be 0, 0,33 meters. You divide by a hundred. And the second position he got. 33,1, if I'm not mistaken, yes, 33,1, and when you convert it to 0,331. 
okay the rest is a calculation which i already done here now note the following because of the direction is important and we took the direction of trolley one as positive then this one is going to be negative but it's entirely up to you which one do you want to be the negative um side it doesn't really matter if it's trolley one or trolley two either one the result will be the same now when you multiply 0 comma 8 times 0 comma 33 you will get 0 comma 264 and when you multiply here you will get negative 0 comma 2648 2648 is basically the same so let's quickly fix these um, columns here to see if we can get some more space here okay guys here is the table fix i just um, open it a little bit wider so the numbers fit properly so this is what we got now the last result here is um, the addition of this one here this number plus this number which in this case is negative when you calculate that specific for the first reading you will get minus 8 times 10 to the minus 4 um, Okay guys, here we are. I fixed the table a little bit so the number fed. And um, so now it's fitting. Now we have only one um, block to complete, which is this one. And that one is the addition of this product plus this other product here, respecting the negative. Now, when you calculate that one, I got, I got a eight times 10 to the minus four, which is very close to zero, it's a zero comma, zero 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 and many zeros there okay i'm going to write just zero because it is very close to zero it's near zero i got eight times ten to the minus four eight times ten to the minus four i'm going to write it down and then round off to zero the answer is negative eight times ten to the minus four but that is near zero so we are going to keep it as zero okay so now let's go to the second trolley the second reading the second trial okay and let's see the data the learner did. okay guys and now we are going to do the last trial or complete the last trial we didn't do the experiment actually it was the letter and note there's something important here we're going to analyze the whole questions just now but note that all these answers are nearly zero so here we are going to keep that zero there and we're going to round uh, to zero because it's very close to zero okay so here is all the data we're going to complete the experiment now the rest of the questions right now okay okay guys once you finish with the data we have to move on to the next step which is to draw a tape a graph of uh, m1 x1 versus m2 x2 and draw a line of best pet down this graph was done in excel and if you look carefully here the graph is practically a line it is a line it's only one dot a little bit out of line which will explain later that this problem of some um, bs here and some um, errors okay but it's normal that happened during an experiment so this is the graph that we have to do so we carry on we have to analyze that graph now from here they say in this experiment we took the measure of position as measure of respective velocity so apply the law of conservation of momentum and using equation of motion demonstrate mathematically that these positions can be taken as measure of respective velocity so let's do that one
Okay guys, and from now from that analysis, we are about to finish the experiment, say interpret the sum of x1, um, m1, x1 plus m2, x2. If you notice here, they, all of them are very close to zero. Okay, what does it mean? That this represents the final momentum of the system and is equal to zero. The initial was also zero. So it means that the uh, final momentum, the total final momentum of the system is zero and is conserved is equal to the total initial momentum. That is the um, interpretation of that equation. Now calculate the gradient. Um, I just calculated is a negative. This isn't supposed to be negative because at the bottom the, the denominator is negative. But if you do it positive, it won't be a big problem. Something important, guys. The numbers you're going to use for the gradient are not the plotting numbers. They must be numbers that are along the line. That is why I use 0, 0,3 which is right here in the corner of the line and I use 0, 0,28 which is um, there in the line as well. When you calculate the gradient using the line, not the plotted point, you will get one as I did there. Uh, question four, what is the meaning of the gradient? Well, the gradient uh, means that the magnitude of the linear momentum of the trolley one is equal to the magnitude of the linear momentum of the trolley two. The conclusion is the law of conservation of linear momentum and now possible bias or experimental errors. First, why must the runway be smooth? Is to keep the system isolated, the learner say it in the experiment. How are possible errors that can occur or what are possible errors that can occur in this experiment? Now, what could, could happen? First of all, that the uh, surface is not completely smooth, that there is a lot of friction in the wheels that the learners don't stop the trolleys at the same time. Now, how can we, um, how can the errors be eliminated? First of all, make sure the surface is as smooth as you can. Second of all, oil the wheels of the trolley. Third of all, repeat the experiment many times to reduce a calculation or some mistakes. The other, other way is to use more than one learner, so uh, the work is, um, um, share between the lines. So guys, this is the experiment. I hope you understand. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. I'll see you next time. This is the last video of conservation of momentum or momentum and impulse. Next time we're going to be starting with project that. Thank you for watching.